All right, guys, you ready for part two? We're going to be talking about jigs today. You ready to run a gun? It's time for blast off. Let's go. Todd here with you. Welcome back to Bassett 101, part two in the jig tutorial. We're going to be talking about mostly color choices today. How you choose it versus trailer colors, because everything can change. Everything has different effects to it. You know, I was showing you this color last week of the olive with the lime. I really like this in summertime. You get that bloomy kind of water because it offers a really good silhouette, but a very natural lime green type of sheen at the bottom. And this is Chartreuse Shad. This is a Zoom Big Salty Chunk in Chartreuse Shad. That gives off, you know, a little darker greenish black color. It kind of matches that olive a little bit, but I like the real light Chartreuse. And man, summertime, this is a great color. It really is because you don't have crystal clear water in the summertime. It's very bloomy, very green, what we call fishy looking water. <laughs> little Larry Nixon quote there. But that's definitely one of the colors I use on that. But it's not the only one. But basically, in summertime, I have really good success with that particular color. Another color that you don't see very much anymore, and it's a shame because it catches a lot of fish, is your black and chartreuse. Now you've noticed on these jigs, I haven't trimmed the skirt, the, the, skirt, the skirt very short, especially the black and chartreuse. I've left them kind of long. The reason is I just I want I don't want the skirts to go by cutting them. I want them to stay kind of streamlined. And this type of jig. I mentioned last time in a video this is an old an old color mix trick and uh, Randy Blaukett had mentioned this when I saw it I was like wait a minute he ain't the only one that used to do that I used to do it too and I wasn't the only one back then either but black and chartreuse with that jig trailer that color it's perfect and it's something bass don't see a lot of. So you get that mixing of the black and the chartreuse. But you can also do black and chartreuse with a black trailer. Y'all well, can use green pumpkin if you want. This is not necessarily a muddy water color. Now you can use this in stained water, clear water. You just have to experiment with them. But that's two different color choices I have. The other one is the old standby, the black and blue. Now with black and blue, you can use black. Uh, if you have uh, really stained water but a bright sunny day, blue can be a very good choice too. Very good choice in trailers. You can even stay subtle with it. And you can use green pumpkin. Yeah, choice is yours, man. Um, or even go hog wild crazy and put a chartreuse trailer on there. Black, blue, and chartreuse is a classic color. Another color I use is the pumpkin, olive, and orange. Springtime, uh, early fall, even the summertime. I mean, it's, the choice is yours. Let the fish tell you what they want color-wise. But this is more of a natural, clear water color. You see it's got some pumpkin, olive. It's a few strands of orange, not many. I think it's only like maybe five strands of orange but it looks like a lot of orange doesn't it one strand is huge so that's what i have on that with this color i like the castic choice the one i showed you last time that's kind of a translucent brown and uh kind of an olive color and that's really good on that jig 
But then again, so is green pumpkin. Or even black. Black shows up good too in that. Now one thing I want to show you that I do with my with my trailers, I, yeah, I told you I'll boil them so they get really soft. But I also take a pair of scissors. This is an old pork chunk trick. I take a pair of scissors and I slice it all the way up into the head. See that? Slice it all the way up into the head. The reason is my hook always comes out right there at the back of the chunk. So I don't want any plastic forcing the legs up this way. I want this to be able to come all the way out, cover around that hook, and get all the action out of the legs I want. It's an old pork chunk trick. And back in the day, we used to, I used to take a pork chunk and slice it right here, about a quarter inch back, just to kind of separate that harder part of the meat from the chunk. And then I would slice it like this, so that this would fold open and get really soft. Sometimes we just dealt with pork back in the day. It was a little stiff. I would take a meat tenderizer hammer to it. <laughs> like that was doing them up. I even made a rock tumbler one time. I would throw the pork chunks in a rock tumbler overnight and just let it tumble with a bunch of rocks. It really didn't change much. I loved, I, you know, I loved pork back in the day. And I used to always thread them on the very back just like this, which made a very long jig. But I honestly, I like the shorter, bulkier type deal. That's just me. Uh, and the last color I have here, which is also a color I love, is Texas Crawl. And again, just like five strands of chartreuse is all I use, but look how much of that is in there. This is about 10 or 15 strands, so it's a huge difference. About 10 strands maybe. But Texas Crawl, this is not a muddy water color. You can it's mostly stained or clear you can use again you can use that cassock choice which is a really good color you can use black you can use green pumpkin I mean you can even use a chartreuse shad if you wanted to there's chartreuse shad or use that chartreuse trailer let me get that work and kind of look at it better you know chartreuse trailer it's up to you but these that's it I have six colors and trailers I showed you last time my six colors and trailers again that green pumpkin black flipping blue chartreuse shad chartreuse and cassock choice and they're just you know you don't use like one color trailer for one jig one color trailer for another jig you can swap these colors around the cool thing is like in this chartreuse shad right here, if I put it in this olive and lime, it really makes that lime come to life. But if I did it a little darker, let's say I put this cassock choice on here, it's, you see more of the olive. It doesn't, it doesn't allow that lime to pop out like that does. That's a little color trick right there. Same thing for black and blue. You take black and blue, and you put a black chunk on there, and you really see that dark black jig. But if I was to put blue on there, now it makes that blue in that skirt pop. You see that? That's a trick you need to, I think you need to learn. It's very important because you can completely change the outlook of a spinnerbait, I mean, of a jig. Now, because I'm already thinking about spinnerbaits, I'm going to tell you a little trick I learned uh, years ago in the pond. And you can apply this to jigs, especially if you use a silicone skirt. So, so listen, listen up here. I experimented several years ago in a farm pond that was my testing tank um, for building lures and things like that. I took a spinner bait with uh, four or five different shades of colors: blues, greens, oranges, chartreuse, white. And I was taking trailers in chartreuse, white blue you know flipping blue type color i was taking uh straight green things like that and these were silicone skirts okay and spinner bait when i drop it in the water the color of that trailer made whatever color matched in that skirt dominant so you could take that clear type spinner bait 
and change the whole thing blue or change the whole thing chartreuse. And my mind started working. I'm like, hey, this is a cool trick. So I wonder if it would work with rubber skirted jigs that are not translucent. And it does work. See how that line pops out? You put green pumpkin and the line doesn't pop as much as it did. Or even straight chartreuse really make that sucker pop. Look at that. It's all in the eyes. So that's what I have, guys. Five colors of jigs, six colors of trailers. All the trailers are Zoom Soup uh, Big Salty Chunks. You might have, I guarantee you're going to have your own type trailer, and that's fine. And like I said in the last video, 3 8 ounce jigs. Some of these have rattles. Some of these don't. But I have collars on all of them. So if I want to snap on rattles, I can snap them on. And this is basically just a, you know, that Mickey Mouse type collar with the little snap-in barrels. I like these because I use two. Because it's a very subtle rattle. It's not loud at all. And I like that. But sometimes I don't even use a rattle. You know, that's that lime green. But they still have the Mickey Mouse collar on them. So if, I if, so if I want to put rattles on there, I can. I don't always fish a jig with a rattle. It just depends. But that's what I have for tutorial, guys. So for part three, we're going to go over rods and reels and types of lines to fish these jigs with. So until then, may the Father bless you in keeping Yeshua's name. And as always, I'm going to hook myself. Fish on! Thank <laughs> you.